most generic live show. This is the generic live show. That's right! Hello everyone and welcome to a very special episode of the generic live show! That's right, I need to get my two dollars worth out of these. Okay, that's the last one. Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the generic live show. This is the generic live show with Dale Campbell. Thanks for joining us here on a Sunday, our 100th episode. That's right, it is indeed our 100th episode of the generic live show. And it is very good to be here. Thanks for joining is here on the generic live show for a Sunday, our 100th, uh, a 100 years of the generic live show celebrations. That's right. This is not going to be a normal episode of the generic live show. This is going to be a very special episode of the generic live show, celebrating our 100th year, uh, 100th year, <laughs> our 100th episode. But it's 100 years of the generic live show because it's taken us nearly. Four years to get to episode 100, but uh, thank you. First, first and foremost, thank you to everyone who makes, who has made, and st continues to make this show possible, excluding myself. So I, al I also make this show. If I start naming people, I'm going to forget people, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start naming people and forget people. So evidently enough, but uh, thank you to CJ Boat and the people over at Geek IO who allow me to have this program continuously be a part of their programming block. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we're I'm constantly in talks with them to try, you know, I'm, you know, work for, work for Geek.io and it's, it's a pleasure to do so and do producing work for them and have them allow me to have that, this show on their network, uh, on the Geek.io network. It's, it's a great honor and, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's a brilliant opportunity, and thank you for CJ and the crew of the Geek.io for having the show on the network, first and foremost. Uh, thank you to our contributors, uh, guests, former yeah, former guests, current guests, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. There's no, there's no guests on tonight's episode, so I don't know why I'm saying uh, former guests. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Casual interns that I've had on the show, people that have helped out with special events. Uh, my housemate Kieran, who will be listening to this from the other room. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for the, for being here throughout this adventure. And I said on Facebook earlier that whether you've been you were, you came on the journey last week, if or if you're coming on the journey right now, if this is your first ever generic live show. You are a part of the journey, and we here at the Genetic Live Show appreciate appreciate that uh, right from the get go. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support over the course of the last one hundred episodes of the Generic Live Show. I said this in the pre-show, and I'll say it again here. It is. It has been an amazing adventure, and like we'll get into uh, a little bit later on, uh, a bit further down the line as we reflect on the journey that's got us here to this moment right now, the show is very different today than what it was back in March of 2014. And I said in the pre-show that this show has kind of grown up with me, if that makes sense. Uh, not that I, I was younger. That's that's how age works, I guess. But I was very, I want to say inexperienced is not the right word. But I, I've certainly grown up in the last three, four years, and this this show has definitely been a reflection of that through bad times but definitely good times and when when there are good times this show is definitely a showcase of that if it's unfortunately in bad times of my life 
the show also reflects that, but in a different way. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's kind of this juxtaposition thing where if the show is, you know, if, if the show is, is kind of this weird anomaly where if things are going good, then we're good. And if things are a little off kilter, A, they show in, they, they definitely show up in the show because that's just how performance art works. Uh, also, I think it, it, it also happens to be a reflection of that and an outlet for that. And thank you everyone. Well, again, whether you've been here since day one to jump on board, uh, thank you everyone for your, your constant support of this current adventure. And I, I, I was going to do a normal show today when we were planning, uh, the month of November, uh, sorry, the month of October out, but I thought to myself, I thought to myself, you know, no, I, 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 I wanted to do a normal show and say, Hey, happy 100th. Here's what I do now. But it's been an all encompassing adventure through the different formats, through the different years, through different times in my life. And this show has definitely been a reflection of me moving through out of my teenage years, even when I started this show, and into adulthood now. Back from now, I was living in an old, old house back at the time when I started this show, back in my parents' house, and now that I'm in my own townhouse. I practically have, you know, have more or less a shell of a studio where I record things now. It's, it's amazing. And now that I have the setup to freely record things when I want to is kind of amazing. So it, it is a continuous adventure for sure. And thank you very much everyone for jumping on board now. Okay. It's not a po- oh, hang on, I need to do the cheers, everyone. Grab your drinks, uh, we'll create the clink, there you go. Uh, clink sound effect, I don't actually want to test if this is plastic or not, but cheers. Brilliant wine. And if you don't know the story of the wine, catch up on the Vacation Recap Special last week. Anyway. Free one from an aeroplane. That's really good. Okay. So, <laughs> enough about that. Let's get started. Let's get this party started. Bum, 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 bum. What's a party without some good food? Before we get into 100 Years of Generic Live Show Special, which will probably run for about an hour to an hour and a half. I like to keep the specials. <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about that. Uh, but... These type of specials to be about an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half, depending on what they are. So, what's a good party without food? And, you know, particularly for me, a staple at any good party for me is definitely Pringles. You know, you know, you know Pringles, they're, they're these things, they're, they're shaped like a, like a, they're, they're potato chips. Uh, and I've kind of spoiled it now, so we've got some limited edition Australian-owned Pringles to try on the show. And here are, this one is a chili sambal flavour. There doesn't seem to be any, any kind of description based on that. Uh, it is a chili sambal flavour savoury snack. <laughs> Helpful! <laughs> and, um, uh, packed in a protective atmosphere, so that's good. Uh, Planet Earth is a protective, uh, protective, uh, atmosphere. Uh, ingredients that I will not read because, let's just say, uh, there's more food acids and in amplifiers in here than I'd like to imagine. Okay, so I'm going to open it up. Uh, I did take the seals off. Okay, disclaimer, I did take the seals off before 
uh, before the show. Oh, okay. The smell is very spicy. <laughs> so the smell is very, very spicy. Uh, let's take one of these. Actually, I might take I might take two of them. They're pretty small, actually. Uh, I didn't realize these to be uh, so small. Hold them up to the camera. They're very small. And I don't know if those du that dust uh, shows up on the stream. Alright, so we're going to take a bite into these. Um. Hmm. They're not bad. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, hey, hey. There's the spice. There's the spice that we've known and love. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll be eating these during during the next part of the show. Have a few more. Hmm. They're good. These are really good. But you wouldn't want to have too many of them at once. You wouldn't want to un underestimate the power of the these aftertaste. That, because they definitely hit you on the tail end there. With the spices. Okay. Uh, alright, so. Uh, next up, uh, we have we have two Pringles to try. <sighs> I need to... The spice is right on the edge of, end of my, uh, end of my tongue. And yes. I'm using wine as my palate cleanser because why not? Uh, next up, we have Pringles Meat Pie Flavor Aussie Favorites. This also doesn't have an excerpt. Also packed in a protective atmosphere. Also including, including a whole bunch of flavorings that I don't want to know about. Uh, so I'm going to pop the lid off this one. And... Oh, pop the lid. Excuse me. Oh, that's a meat pie. I just took a smell. And that's a meat pie. These are going to be good. I was a bit, I was a bit iffy on the smell of them. Uh, but these are the meat pie ones. So, holding them up to the camera now. These are going to be good. These are going to be good, so... Mmm. Mmm. Oh. These are good. These are really good. Oh my god. Mm. These are going to be good. Oh, that's good. The meat pie ones are a winner. A winner, winner. Meat pie for dinner. Those are really good. Alright, so. Meat pie. Oh. The meat pies are a winner. For sure. They're, the chili ones are good. I just don't think that they're more. They're, they're not my style. They're not my style. But the meat pie ones are right up my alley. Oh, and I'm a meat pie boy through and through. I love for me myself some meat pie because you know what's what's better than a meat pie? Nothing, right? Nothing is better than a meat pie. Nothing can go past a meat pie as I cleanse my throat. All right, so there's food. Every good party has good food. And that's definitely good food. Uh, you know what else is uh, what else are parties known for? Uh, I know games. Let's play a game. No, it's not a BuzzFeed quiz. Although <gasps> I don't have one prepared, but I'm going to prepare a BuzzFeed quiz because we need to play a BuzzFeed quiz on the show. If you're not familiar, in the post show, excuse me, in the post show, what we typically do is take a BuzzFeed quiz and make and do it. Ooh. And do it and make fun of how wrong the answer was. Although last week they kind of 
hit the nail on the head, unfortunately, so it wasn't good material. But normally we do a BuzzFeed quiz and kind of make fun of it, but again, wasn't wasn't the case this last week. So, what what other fun game is there to do at a birthday party? I don't know. Talk to your friends about old times, and this is what we're going to be doing right now on the Generic Live Show as I as I transition smoothly. Look how smooth that was. We're gonna yes. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rewatch the very first episode of the Generic Live Show because <laughs> this sounds like this sounds like a great idea on the show and reminisce about old times so here we are it runs for 20 minutes and 55 seconds <laughs> so we're gonna this is very visual so if you if you're listening to this on audio i'm gonna i'm gonna post the link uh in the chat spoiler alert the format of the show has not well the format has definitely changed than what it used to be but it's literally, it's me talking into a camera, so there shouldn't be anything too visual. I'll put a link in the show notes uh, to the YouTube video of this. But we're, we're going to be reminiscing about old times, and I'm going to provide a little bit of running commentary where I can of the first ever generic live show, March 12th, 2014. Here we go. Live, hello everyone, and welcome to the generic live show episode number zero, recorded uh, Wednesday the twelfth. Again, of March old house. We're going to get started here, pretty much straight away. <laughs> I don't think of anything else. Look how young I am. Oh. Other than the birds are really loud in the background. They were. Really I'm on loud about a seven second though. delay uh, from Sam to the Google Hangout. <laughs> Because oh yay! That's that's, that's the first thing you want to hear on a new show is about technical Alrighty, difficulties, Dale. Uh, let's Dale. get this show on the road. I am nervous as all hell. Mm. Nothing's we're changed. We're in fancy clothes. We're in fancy clothes. <laughs> Why am I doing this routine? Why do I do half the stuff I do? Oh, by the way, way, too big for myself. By the way, that's a that's a that's, that's a, a that's, that's not an actual pig in the background. I want to put in. Three, two, one. Oh God! What? Okay, this is the second time this has happened because I thought, I did a stream last uh, a couple of weeks ago where I watched old episodes. I can't remember this ever being the theme song. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. To, welcome back. Welcome to. <laughs> welcome to Dad Talking. Welcome to. The generic live show. This is the generic live show delivering your daily dose of genericness from around Australia and the globe. Oh, it used to be a daily show, that's right. And uh, this is the show where we are going to be talking about pretty much everything and anything. Oh. Anything goes with the generic live show. Oh. Uh, we're going to be talking about anything mostly the, generic live show. Uh, the, the news news of the day, some headlines, we're going to take one of those headlines and discuss them in detail. It's going to be here every single day. Uh, there's no set oh. time, there's no anything at all, but it will be streamed live via Google+. That's Plus cute! And, are barking and the birds are going ballistic. I'm going to stop doing this hand, hand in <laughs> motion and look at some that. headlines. That's cute. I was very ambitious, by the way, back in the day. Very ambitious. Nothing's changed, really. Nothing has really changed. In the headlines today, SC Mag reports that the Australian Telecommunications and Media Company. So this is the old format where I used to be headlines and one hundred and sixty-one dollars and eighteen American dollars. That's just a little over ten grand. That's ten grand two hundred dollars for violating piracy <laughs> laws as a result of a data breach affecting fifteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-five of its customers. After a joint investigation by the office of uh, the office of Australian Information. 
Commissioner and Australian Communications and Media Authority, a privacy watchdog, the entities that found Telstra was in violation of the Piracy Act, the National Piracy Principles, and the Telecommunications Pre Protections Code, according to a report by The Australian. The breach was discovered in May of 2013 and included customer names, tele phone numbers, as well as their home and business addresses. The information which affected any Telstra customers from 2006 to 2009 can be found via Google searches from February 2012 through May of 2013. And that will be going, we'll be reading an article that kind of tells you more about the Telstra privacy breaches in a lot more detail. The ABC breaks this story to us about the Northern okay, Territory that was government weird. shutting down all power in the city, causing a shutdown in all of the schools and the territory's public service in what is calling a blackout emergency. The Water and Power Corporation is apologizing to tens of thousands of Darwin residents without power. It says the Darwin-wide, quote-unquote, quote, Code Black has been caused by a tripped circuit at Hudson Creek. A spokeswoman says that a safety switch also shut down the Channel Island station. It has left all of Darwin without power for the past six hours. The Territory's Counter Disaster Committee has met this morning to discuss a response to the outage. Power and Water Minister Dave Toloner was calling on people to quote, stay calm and be safe on roads with all traffic lights out this morning. He also says that the power is to be stored at some time. I could say that the show will go up at some time. That doesn't really give me a period. <laughs> Mashable put up an wow. article this morning Jeez. about Kara Angus robot arms and how they went to battle with a Ooh. German table tennis team and former number one player of the world, Tomo Ball, on March 11th. Unfortunately, the match was not streamed live. Instead, China-based Color filmed the match for a commercial and then sliced and diced it into a, fi a final cut. Much of the action was in slow motion, which may because... Bol and Askers moved way too quickly to be caught on a camera waiting regular speed. And the result? The human won. Of course, because <laughs> l luckily the, the result, the human, the human won. I am very, won like I said very, very earlier, I'm very new at this. Human at this point in my that. radio career. I still am new at Activism this. Activism Blizzard. Activision Blizzard Inc.'s chief executive Robert Keetuk was awarded a cash bonus of $7.9 million for 2013 as part of the video game publisher's incentive plan, according to a regulatory fly filing. Jeez. Uh, this, uh, this week. The board granted <laughs> I don't know what a this cash is. bonus equivalent to 374% of his 2.1 million base salary last week the filing stated I wish I could get a 7.9 million <laughs> I still think that bonus yeah. you take what you can get I guess uh, and finally <laughs> you take what you can Herald, get what Herald the hell Sun reports that meanwhile over there at the Herald Sun they're reporting on a bunch of newlyweds, a row of newlyweds, on a honeymoon flight. Forces the plane to divert their flight to their honeymoon destination. Force the plane to make an emergency landing. No further details were provided on the story. Oh. Again, I want to remind you that that's, that's the headlines <laughs> right there. <laughs> Mind you again that those are the headlines. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay. I say some weird stuff. Just say. Just say. Oh. 
I am so glad that I decided to do a pilot episode of this. This is like a pi pi pilot like no other. Hey, Ron, yeah, this is really a pilot episode. We are doing this instead of down in Colorado at the moment. Uh, and this is really a pilot like no other because the show is picking up on, on Monday the 17th. This was meant to be like last week's show, but I kind of had to push it back because I was busy with a few things. Speaking of busy with a few things, I better not be busy on the phone. Otherwise, Telstra would be on to me like no tomorrow. Telstra breaches the privacy of 15,000. Also, another show that I used to do down under Colorado. Aww, I want to bring that show back eventually. Somehow. May of last year. Officers of Australia Information Commission and the Australian Commission and Media Authority concluded in a report on Tuesday that Telstra broke privacy laws and were fined $10,200. I remember this story! The breach was first huh. revealed by Fairfax Media in May of last year. I was affected by this I don't know if I mentioned this, but I was affected by this story. 31, aren't they always? Of Chelsea Heights oh. in Victoria. <laughs> what? Who found spreadsheets containing the data accessible to anyone Dirty online one. via a Google always. search? The data discovered included customer names, telephone numbers, and in some cases, home and business addresses. Chastra said it contained no passwords. Well, you don't really well you don't really need a password for a phone service unless you have the Telstra. Uh, online recharging thing, yeah, well, which I don't anymore, thank God. I don't anymore. It prompted action by Telstra and the Office of Australian and Information Commissioner over the incident, which included the information on 1,257 active silent phone line customers. Oh, yeah. The Australian Privacy Commissioner, Tom uh, Timothy Pilgrim, found Telstra breached three that existing would be national Timothy. privacy principles. Thank you. Which had failed to take responsibility steps to ensure, oh, so steps to ensure the security of personal information it held, destroy or permanently de-identify the personal information it held, and prevent disclosure of personal information other than permitted purpose. Following the breach, Telstra agreed to take several. Wait, is this really even not in the sync? Software platform which the incident occurred, and renewing all contacts with third parties relating to handling personal information. Uh, we have a very, very good um, article in the show notes that I will put into the okay. discussion point uh, kind of section. It is, of the it show is notes, it's uh, a little off. Everyone to read. I am nervous. I really am of what this means for Telstra and kind of where they sit with the containing people's data uh, once it's the once bitten twice shy kind of mentality where if you're bitten once to buy I go on to explain once bitten, bitten twice shy you don't really want to be kind of wanting to trust them again well, thank god for that but the but I think <laughs> Telstra has a history of delivering their customer service is fine. Their customer logistics, however, are n not so great. Where they pull up a they come up with a plan and then they go, Oh shit, it's going bad. Let's <laughs> let's turn this thing around. I just said the word shit. Oh. I Pests won the first you episode I mean. of GLS! Anyway, this show is meant to be PG-13 anyway, so there you go. I think that Telstra... <laughs> Telstra's going to have to backtrack It's been a running joke since opinion. day one! I love I it! I don't think customers are going to be... redundant... not redundant. They're going to be reluctant to kind of trust <laughs> Telstra the with way. their particular information again. If that makes any sense at all, please let me know. Uh, it uh, does. Quote, yes. We accept the view that the problem of one of our IT platforms that to some basic customer details 
This page such as name addresses were visible to uh, online for about fifteen hundred people, fifteen thousand people. <coughs> we're now encouraging an independent third party auditor to certify we have implemented the steps to committed with the privacy commissioner, says a Tusker spokeswoman. Okay, that's not going to help the past, though. What I want to know is, what is Telstra going to do for people who have had their identity stolen? That's what I really, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to get to the core of, is oh, no. what is Telstra going to do to uh -oh. help protect no. those people? I don't want title. Where did that come from? Already title stolen. Text. They're or they're now at vulnerability in the future, regardless of of what they try and do anywhere at the moment. You know, because their information was made okay. public through ribbon uh, Google Docs. Which, by the way, I don't know about you, but I do not use Google Docs. But, well. I, yeah, I would not make the data. I would kind of encry hopefully encrypt the data. Oh, better, so 2014, it, Dale, you don't use that Google data Docs. Source using to oh, that's Google Docs. sweet. That's, that's right, I didn't that I really use Google Docs back then. But that's just me. Oh, that's cute. I think this makes me think that do not trust Telstra yet again. Because I think they... And they have done this in the past, and they have. <laughs> I'll point out a really ironic statement been in, the in a sec. Not particularly for this incident, but for the National Broadband Network, <laughs> to where they kind of dropped the A ball on preparing that. I think that. I think that having them drop the apples so many times with me. I don't really love them so much, but they love me because everything I have is with Telstra. Everything. Well, apart from apart from my Skype line, which Telstra wants, by the way. I don't they they really they really want me to have a, a, a landline number as well. So yeah, I it's it's kind of Telstra did want my Skype line at the time. That is factually accurate. Not a euphemism. Uh, but I, yeah, Telstra loves me. I don't really love them so much. They're okay, and I find that all of the, I uh, like also all of the is just as good as each other anyway. I still use Telstra. So kind of that is still a thing. I still use Telstra as my that. main telecommunications like service. You want to go with that. Hashtag not sponsored. And that's a discussion point, everyone. And that's that's a show. I know it's it's going to be. It is a. This show is going to be fairly short. It's going to be <laughs> an article. Oh, 2014 Dale, if only you knew what the show became. Have guests on, which we do want to have guests on. Uh, we will be a bit longer because we will interact with those guests and <laughs> will we? have them contribute will we? if they hey, want Maddie. to do the headlines do or we ever to the discussion, particular oh. discussion point. Well, 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 and Americans, I know this is Australia. This is an Australian show, so you have to Americans. This is an Australian English show. Australian. Yes, I'm. Since a Australian deal with it. <laughs> daily news show. Oh my so god! There's not much news today, actually. I don't know why I picked to do it on a Wednesday, when. There's really <laughs> not much news. Oh it. my god! Was I really? Thank thought you for listening this? to this. Uh, whatever this is, I think it's a show. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still a bleh. Oh, it falls apart! Uh, I really enjoy doing these shorter shows. These shorter, half hour solo shows. I can just get on and just talk for half an hour about generic <laughs> That's stuff. cute! This is a generic live show. We don't have an email as of yet. I'm trying to still set that up with uh, the powers that be, be it me and the impromptu of this, but by Monday I will have an email address <laughs> for this show. By the Monday, powers I that be, i.e. me. I iTunes set up, I will have this show in that iTunes. I will have a pilot like no other in the iTunes and in on the websites. 
which is chefwonder.squarespace.com slash GLS and geek No longer exists! GLS. Geek-i.net slash GLS actually and, still exists. Um, we will see you all on Monday uh, for yet another uh, another another generic live show because it'll be five days a week daily. I want to get this out as a pilot episode though, on the thing. Oh my god. And hopefully we will I don't know, we'll try and keep it to about about this length. About twenty twenty oh. minutes to half an hour, forty minutes at the very maximum with get some. Thank you very much and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Oh my What is this? Um Wow. Wow, 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 the show has changed a lot since we last did it. Well, since I first started doing it. Oh my god, that was... Oh, Find the audio. Okay. You're listening to a proud member of the Chef on the Podcast Network. Oh, longest! For more information about this and other shows. <laughs> longest <laughs> outro in world. history. Even fresher in 2014. Even fresher in 2014. I could name you the Chef on the, like, things. Rip Chef on the... You've been listening to a part of the Geek IO Podcast Network. No! <laughs> Visit us at geek-io.com for all of our great shows. The pressure is building Don't slowly, inexorably inside me. Oh my. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's bad for you. Go figure out what Outro in history. Geek-io. Copyright 2014. I want to get out of here. I want to leave this place right now. What? Um. First of all. There's, there's, there's... Because hope, because hope you like 2014. Because hope you like 2014. Bye, broadcasters. Bye, broadcasters. Wow, that was wonderful. That was so bad. Um, first and foremost. If you have a podcast, and I am meaning this very seriously, you don't have to do it live on the internet, although that, that does cause for some fascinating tales. But I do recommend you go back and re-listen to your first batch of episodes, because you get to know what has changed. Um, very ambitious of me trying to do a daily show back then when all that was happening. And, wow, man, the show has changed so much. I uh, used to talk about it for half an hour. Now I do a three-hour rock block every sun. well, three-ish hours every Sunday. We do a two-hour show and about a half-hour pre-show post-show. We do about a, th- a three-hour rock block. And, you know, the, the show has changed tremendously. And... Like I said, it, it all happens back to me growing up with the show as well. First of all, that, that is just brilliant. A lot has changed since then. Uh, for it to be known, that format of... Excuse me, the format of a daily show lasted about a week uh, before I went to university. <laughs> Actually, that was happening while... That was happening while I was at university, I believe in 2014, uh, but very ambitious of me to take on a project like that at the time, not knowing what ramifications are. Uh, there was a pivot where I went, all right, I have this block of time available, let's fill it up with things, and now I occasionally do things, and we'll come back to this a little, little way later in the show, but I do, I have a set block of time, and I go, right, this is time. I have this time carved out with it that that's what this show has turned into this show has turned into a two-hour show with a 30-minute pre-show post-show typically 30-minute pre-show post-show sometimes 
the post show has gone for an hour and a half before because we've just gone down this dark rabbit hole of kind of going you know here's this you know here's this thing that someone's brought to us from the from the chat room and gone what's your opinion on this we go we've we've dug into this rabbit hole of that and it, this show has turned into a very a very very audience based show whether that's from comments in the chat room live uh, or to you comments left on episodes whether it's through email at generic live show at gmail.com uh, whether it's through those the show has changed from this little half hour dial gets on the internet to this production and I think again that's me growing up with the show it's turned into this production <sighs> man man oh man oh man but I'm not so, I'm not disregarding those old episodes those those old episodes definitely do exist I'm not I'm this is not me disregarding those they definitely do exist and they're, they're an important part of the Janak live show history for sure definitely for sure and particularly the transition I think happened despite the breaks in between lots of shows there were there were periods of time where I had to take a few months off at a time a because university got busy uh, I've, I had personal issues I had family issues uh, whether whether those were the case uh, I had to take periods of time off and I think that's when the real transitions happened from that headlining show where I did it daily for a week and then I moved to Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, back no 10:30. 10:30. Then we moved. Like, we've moved time slots so many times. I I can't even remember. I think we've had five time slots. So we we were originally airing every weekday. Then we moved to Wednesdays at 10:30 p p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Then we moved to 10 because we did the double shots, which were double the headlines, double the discussion. We moved to 10. Then we moved to Fridays before the Geek I.O. show at 10 uh, a.m. That's when we first started doing the talkback episode. That was, by the way, that's, I have some days like that now, too, where I back things back to back, and I'm kind of like, oh, here's another production. I, I, I enjoy podcasting, but it's kind of, I try and not book things back to back for a reason. But we did that, uh, that was 10, 10, that was 10am Australian Eastern Standard Time. And then we moved to 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. Then we moved to this time slot right here, 9pm uh, uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, Daylight Savings. We moved to 7am basically Eastern Time in the US for consistency. Uh, because peel back the curtain, most of my audience is American, despite me in that very first episode saying, Americans, if you don't like Australian references, then this is not the show for you. Uh, <laughs> despite that fact, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> but, and it's not a friend, I know I'm fully aware this is not a, uh, this is not a friendly time slot for an Americans. We are, we are working on that and the time slot may move next year uh, because uh, typically what happens is I sit down at the end of the year and go all right let's move times let's move things around to make them easier for me so the time slot may change uh, depending on if that's a thing it might not change at all so it'll depend on it'll depend on a network movements uh, also it'll depend on my movements for the next year as well on you know uh, outside of work and you know trying to schedule a, a three-hour block of time that I'm available it's 
nine, <laughs> eight thirty, nine o'clock on a Sunday night is is the most available time slot that I have three hours spare, because yes, it is not friendly for American audiences. I would probably put this show in the same time slot if it was in America. Try and do it not necessarily Sunday nights, but do it at a night time so I could order in the day, so I could carve out three hour blocks. So, and I know this this is very peel. This is going to be a very peel back the curtain episode, uh, and you have to take into consideration showtime prep as well and editing, as well. Uh, not that I I don't edit much on this show, uh, particularly because it definitely I I even in that pilot I didn't edit at all because I like this show to be very free form in, in its nature. And that's just the type of... I've always loved listening to Talkback Radio. And I still enjoy listening to Talkback Radio. Yes, I'm 85. Thank you for asking. Uh, just because I have a young chipper voice. But I've always enjoyed listening to Talkback Radio. And I think I didn't know back when I first started how to necessarily manifest that. But I definitely... I do now. And kind of knowing what I know now of, of podcasting and, and that sort of stuff and been doing it for a, uh, a while, I know how to convey my message of providing a talkback radio uh, show to the to the internet. And I think constantly developing the show uh, is, is where I kind of sit, if that makes sense. Uh, what else? And the, and the scripted headlines thing and, and between that and now... Doing a normal two-hour show, broken into segments with ad breaks, is definitely more freeform, because I loved doing the discussion points, even though if it was about a subject I didn't know anything about. For example, we did a, seg we did a, we did a segment on spinach and lettuce once. We did, we did an entire... Oh, Dale's analogy... Uh, Dale's analogies I've heard are some of the pe most people's most favourite things. Uh, I think my my personal favourite uh, was the baby formula metaphor I came up with, talking about metaphors, and I still I still get stopped in the street uh, about the. Uh, about the university uh, privatization of university special comment I did on the show and I broke that off and and published that somewhere that is no longer publicly available unfortunately because I was asked to take it down which is understandable uh, and I, I'm I'm more than willing to be be friendly in that regard and I think you know it's definitely one of those things where I'm like, okay, I don't want to fight it, but anyway, I still have people coming up to me and saying that that was a well put put together piece, and putting together special comments is is difficult, but it's something that I want to put more time into, and I I definitely want to do a series of them, but what, where, how, and what is probably a bit more than what I want to get into here, but. Uh, some things I, I, I jotted down as kind of, as, as, as notes, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of kind of, uh, n kind of newer things, uh, that kind of special events that I did, and a special comment on privatization, pri take two, special comment on privatization of universities and their services is definitely one of my favorite things I've ever put together on this show, mainly from a scriptural point of view, mainly because I enjoyed the heck out of writing that special comment in particular, because it was definitely well worth it, it was off the time, and people enjoyed listening to it. So that's definitely something that I always enjoy doing, and the politics in media thing, which I did over a podcasting radio break, was you know was also another thing as well. Uh, it was enjoyed doing, and people seem to have liked that as well. So there you go. 
The US election coverage comes to top of mind when it comes to special events that I've done on this show. And uh, again, a huge thank you to CJ Boat for being my partner in crime on that day. Because that was a weird one. That was a weird stream that lasted, I believe it's in three parts and it's seven hours long. And it's definitely the most rawest that either CJ and I, I think, have ever been on. Because of the circumstances surrounding that, I think it's definitely something that I, I, I personally want to do again, but definitely framed differently. Uh, knowing me, I'm very, I'm very moderate in my politics and, and and people are very extreme on one side or the other, which made that commentary very difficult to kind of go, but what about this? And that, that's me in real life. Ask any of my friends. I'm very, but what about this? Playing devil's advocate, what about this? And it's definitely kind of that impacted the stream a bit because I wanted to not show my politics but also it was a very difficult thing to do without following suit in all of the other major networks and to have an epic meltdown live on the internet <laughs> which was very easy to do which i think the stream from memory kind of ends in me going uh um so <laughs> what now <laughs> ladies and gentlemen what now and I think we we cut off the stream before that because I actually had to go to work, and and I had to go to work because it was getting so late even here to to continue following this. And I think CJ had to go earlier in the stream because you know doing the father thing the next day, and it being on Tuesday, it's kind of weird, and it being on a Wednesday for me. Kind of a little weird, and I'm not going to lie, I was a little rattled when I went to work that day. <laughs> not going to lie. I actually, I, 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 sh I shut everything down, put on my uniform, went straight to work, and the success speech? The acceptance speech, basically, was going on when I got to work. So I'm like, oh, I turned off the stream at the right time then. <laughs> and I, of course sat in the tea room and, and, and watched the acceptance speech. Uh, and it kind of, I don't know, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that in a, a little bit here. But another special that I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing is the Great Burger Debate of 2016 uh, with Kieran, uh, Bruton, Kieran the Mad King Bruton. Uh, that, we're doing that again this year. Uh, we've decided we are doing that again this year. But it's going to be in December. So we're doing it at the end of the year. It's kind of our end of year celebration kind of deal. So uh, it's going to be a part of the last show. Uh, of, no, it is going to be the last show of the year. Um, so there you go. Uh, and that was a bunch of fun to put together. And that also, speaking of on-air jokes, that turned into a reality idea. And that's one thing I thoroughly enjoyed about this more free-form, open rock block kind of programming that this the Genetic Live show has turned into is ideas come up on the show as a joke and I kind of go is there something there? <laughs> is there something there? Is there? And there was in that case there was a great burger debate where we had four burgers and four running mates eight items of items of food uh, to consume within an hour and a half so it was it was brilliant and it was so good and the, the, you know we, we've watched that on the uh, on the geekio youtube channel that video is wine night at generic live show hq we watched a whole bunch of old episodes and that was one of them that we watched and i i again got feedback from watching that myself and kind of taking notes and providing commentary kind of going let's do this differently next time so there you go this has turned into a business meeting. I just realized that. <laughs> this turned into GLS, the business meeting. Uh, one thing that I also, uh, any sort of, again, this is tailing back to that first item, but any kind of election 
IRL uh, event is definitely, definitely, it's happening live. So, the Australian election, having those uh, having those results come in live when we were doing the show, even the next day. Uh, 2016 was a prime example of this. We had local council elections that I got simulcast on public radio stations. Uh, that breakfast show that I did was was amazing. The you know the Aust uh, Australian major election, a federal election that ha that's the word federal. The federal election that happened and not knowing the results and going all right, what do we do? What, what do we do if or when this happens? And what 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 happens when you know this kind of you know you know all the ifs if buts and maybe special events are always my favorite and my my absolute favorite thing to do every year is extra life and yes we are partaking in extra life again this year this is a 25 hour gaming marathon 24 hours for the us because that's the ironically enough the 4th and 5th of november is when daylight savings time goes off so we get an extra hour of gaming for, for sick kids. Uh, Geek-i.net slash extra life is where you can head on over and donate. And it's it's amazing. We're doing it for Children's uh, Miracle Network of Hospitals. If you find it in your heart, please do uh, give uh, whatever you can. And it, it, is, it is definitely well worth it. And uh, like I mentioned, the pre-show, we are doing some live events special events there as well so please do uh, tune in that'll be right here 4th and 5th of november i believe it kicks off at 8 a.m on saturday it does kick off i should know it does kick it does kick off at 8 a.m on saturday i do i do know that i i only say i think because i've got my times in my head so <laughs> It's converting them on the fly that I also... Yeah, that's another thing I also haven't gotten really good at over the years, is, is time conversion. I've gotten better! It just takes me a second to, to, to get it. It just takes me... It takes me... It takes me a hot minute to, 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 to understand what time it is in another country halfway across the world. Uh, but that's that's something i always like to do we did a special event last year at extra life i don't think we did one in 2015. no generic live show didn't do one in 2015. i think we did a show after extra life in 2014. so we did extra life for 25 hours i went ahead and did a generic live show afterwards i think i think i'm doing i think i'm remembering that right but we did a the generic live show rocket league cup last year as well which was about seven hours of rocket league <laughs> all told uh we did some free pay modes as well as some competitions and it was great it was a bunch of fun uh so there you go uh but that and those little those little special events before we take a break here because i need to take a break from talking uh, and we've got some we've got another we've got a buzzfeed quiz now and <laughs> the crack team is on it uh we've got a buzzfeed quiz to play plus we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about the future of the show uh in the second half of the program here i will say this i think the stepping stones have definitely been these special events these special events have uh, while the show is an open format and we could take two hour blocks of time uh, on the on the jack live show proper on the podcast feed to talk about special events those having those special events definitely is a stepping stone uh, for the show and uh, uh, shape the talk back nature of the show as well so it's definitely definitely one of those things that is is definitely uh, it, yeah it, it, it's 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 an interesting those special events are fun to do and definitely kind of shape the main show so that's all i wanted to say there Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and in the meantime, uh, we are going. To, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and if you're listening on podcast, we're going to thank our sponsors. Uh, if you're not listening on podcast, you're going to have some dead air for about five minutes, uh, and then we'll come back and uh, 
continue. Uh, we have a game, uh, and we're going to be talking about the future of the show. Stay tuned. Insert edits here. Uh, uh. All right. I'm going to do that P I promised myself. And we're back. Thanks for hanging in there. Or holding in there. <laughs> hang hold. Thanks for hang holding it in there. <laughs> for, for the generic live show. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's the 100 years of the generic live show. Alright, so. We, 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 we like to do this activity in the, typically in the post show of, of, uh, basically, uh, of, uh, so kind of, exported from oh, whatever data source they use. No, that's me again. We don't want me again. Hi, me again. Oh, no. Hey. Hey, expert. How about you don't do that? Alright, so, here we go. So, uh, we, we, we typically do this in the post-show, but we're doing this on the show because it's our birthday party and we'll do what we want. Gosh damn it. Uh, make a delicious Thanksgiving dinner and we'll reveal the Hogwarts house you actually belong in. This is, I've never actually done a Hogs, Hogwarts, uh, Hogwarts, oh why I just said then, uh, house quiz. So the answer, the answer might, might not act, is actually correct automatically. Uh, Alright, so pick a salad, uh, ooh, aruga, pear, and blue cheese salad, carrot, uh, carrot and chickpeas, tahini salad, kale, apple, bacon, and currants salad, a spinach, onion, and pecan salad. I mean, you can't go past a good pear salad. Pick a soup. Carrot ginger soup with tofu, tofu, potato leek soup with crispy shallots, chestnut mushroom soup with sautéed root vegetables, or apple butternut squash soup with bacon. Oh, bacon. Dear Fred. Pick a turkey. Bacon wrapped turkey, deep fried turkey, grilled turkey, herb buttered turkey, maple glazed turkey, Pork and chestnut filled turkey, <laughs> roasted turkey, or spice rubbed turkey. There is a lot of turkey on this menu. Uh, I, I like the concept of a bacon wrapped turkey, but you just you can't go past a grilled turkey. Come on, what is this? Pick a cranberry sauce. Wait, hang on, hold the phone. There's more than one type of cranberry sauce. <laughs> I, what? No, there's not more than one type of cranberry sauce. There is legitimately just cranberry sauce. That's cranberry sauce. That's all there is. Alright, whatever. Uh, jalapeno cranberry sauce, not a thing. Maple syrup cranberry sauce, also not a thing. Orange and cinnamon cranberry sauce, definitely not a thing. And red wine and fig cranberry sauce, none of those are a thing. <laughs> None of those are a thing, but what would go well with grilled turkey? Probably red wine and fig. Uh, pick a gravy. Apple cider and thyme gravy. Ooh, that's good. Bay leaf and beer gravy are gross. Mushroom and cream gravy. Mm. Onions and herbs gravy. Uh, rosemary and bourbon gravy. Sage and pomegranate gravy. Sausage and cream gravy. <laughs> did, I, did I just say... Hang on, did I just say sage and pomegranate baby? I think I did. Uh, and turkey pan gravy. Ooh, apple cider and thyme gravy does sound nice. Ooh, I might have to go with that. That does sound nice. 
pick a bread biscuit. It's called bread. Okay. Buttermilk biscuits, uh, clover leaf rolls, hush puppies, or Parker house rolls. What are hush puppies? Hey Siri. What are hush puppies? Hush Puppies is an American internationally marketed brand of contemporary, casual footwear for men, women and children. Do you want me to keep reading? Yes. The shoes have been described as the classic American brushed suede shoes with the lightweight crepe sole. A division of Wolverine Worldwide, Hush Puppies is headquartered in Rockford, Michigan. Wolverine markets and completely licenses the Hush Puppies name for footwear in over 120 countries throughout the world. Thank uh, hey Siri. Thank you. No worries. Oh, I didn't use boss. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not eating footwear. Uh, <laughs> there's a good bit. Uh, buttermilk biscuits, clover leaf rolls, or house park. I'm going to do house park rolls. I'll be boring. Pick a stuffing. Uh, Chibita stuffing with sausage, apple, and walnut. Who is making this for the Thanksgiving dinner? Thanksgiving dinner is not a thing I celebrate! Alright. Cornbread stuffing with ham and mustard greens. Uh, Bruce stuffing with mushrooms and herbs. And three bread stuffing with veggies and parmesan. Uh, let's do cornbread stuffing with hams and mustard greens. Pick a potato. Baked potato... Ma but take two. Baked mashed potatoes with parmesan cheese and bread crumbs. Sweet baked potatoes. Garlic mashed potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes, roasted rosemary potatoes, roasted sweet potatoes with cinnamon and honey, uh, spicy scalloped sweet potatoes, and veggie and cheese stuffed potatoes. Oh, come on, it has to be mashed sweet potato. Uh, pick a casserole. Man. Bread and Brussels sprouts casserole. What? Cheesy cauliflower casserole. Gr uh, green beans and scallop casserole and loaded spinach casserole. It has to be cheesy casserole. Uh, pick a corn dish. Uh, there's more going on. Cornbread, corn on the cob, cream, corn, or uh, pimento cheese stuffed corn muffins, corn on the cob. Uh, pick another side and there's more going on down there. Okay. Creamy onions, glazed carrots, uh, roasted squashes or roasted beetroots. Um, roasted beets all the way. Uh, Alright, pick a pie, uh, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, cranberry custard pie or apple pie, you have to go pecan pie, and this is the last question, finally, drum roll please, pick, and finally, pick another dessert, sweet potato and marshmallow cupcake, <laughs> what? I won't make that. I'm gonna make. I want to make that. Sada creme brulee, maple walnut cheesecake, or baked stuff apple with oatmeal and yogurt. Okay, first of all, boring. Second of all, two Thanksgiving dini. I'm gonna go with the sweet potato and marshmallow cake. You got Hufflepuff. Of course I did. Dun, 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 no, I don't want to get the app. How do I? How do I not get? How do I not get the app? The app is not a thing I want. And as I move my camera back, I got half a buff. I always knew, in my hearts and hearts, that I would be a half a buff. Like, look at that. Do you see the similarities between uh, Hufflepuff and me? Hufflepuff! Of course that's me! Alright, Hufflepuff. Alright. That's definitely me, by the way. I'm definitely a Hufflepuff. Through and through. Alright, this feels like the after show already. Alright, so I, one thing I forgot to mention... Uh, before we took our break is... I haven't necessarily retired any segments on the show. Uh, it's definitely not a thing I have done. I, I, I have retired, I think, two segments in the entirety of this show. 
there are definitely bits that I have technically not said on the show that I've retired. Uh, they have been put on hold. No, review of a review I haven't done for a few months because well, the show has been here. Also, uh, they're, they're, the shuffle the news hasn't happened because I don't know how to do that in this new format. So, both of which will be coming back very soon. But I don't necessarily have fixed segments, except for this two. These two. This two? The age-old, the age-old, I remember this being a, a segment, but until I looked it up, I didn't realise this actually had a name. And the name of this segment was, What is the NBN up to this week? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, uh, that was a segment that I, that I had, was, was what, uh, what is the NBN up to this week? It was definitely a segment I was doing on this show for the longest time, and now, the NBN, whilst yes, yeah, still rears its 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 very plausible head from time to time, uh, definitely has gotten to a stage where it's no longer funny to talk about on the show because it they, they definitely are smoother sailing with that than what they were back in 2014, 2015, back when I was doing that segment. And another segment that I've retired indefinitely is the Trump Tracker. Now, I was doing this segment with the Washington Post where we were taking a uh, fact checker and turning it into a Trump Tracker and seeing what promises he has kept as president uh, and which ones he's broken and which ones were on hold and, and what have you. But I kind of have enforced a, a no Trump discussion on this show, uh, mainly because there's this, this famous 20 minute clip. I think it's 20 minutes. It might be, I think I, it was originally meant to be 20 minutes, but I did edit it down to be clip of the week one week of me legitimately having an emotional breakdown on the show because of uh, that gentleman particularly because well what can you do and because of that i'm like how about we put him on hold and i've i've officially retired that segment i'm not saying we might revisit it in a couple of years but we're not bringing that back as a recurring segment every week because a, I think it got boring because he kind of settled on a lot of that executive order stuff that he was going to be doing, thank the Lord. But also, it just, it wasn't fun to talk about. And I think we, you know, we, we would rather reserve things for, that were fun to talk about than kind of, than kind of try and force something on the show because of a deal, if that makes sense. So that, that that that's what that was, and I feel kind of bad for for not doing the Trump tracker because it was this concentrated area where it was, and it broke out into the main show, and it's kind of weird going from the main show to kind of go now we're doing this, and now let's go on the rest of the show. So. Until I find a way to blend it into the actual show, it's on hold, but it won't be called the Trump Tracker anymore. So, what can you do? And I've actually not checked, I've not been there <laughs> since, uh, A, since that meltdown, and B, since I've retired the Trump Tracker. Ah, uh, the Trump Tracker. How fun were you? Alright, so, what are we doing now? What, where, let, let's, let's talk about the show in its current form. So, the show airs, uh, we, we do this, we do this pre-show and post-show every week. Uh, they're about half an hour apiece. Where I, I, I get on the stream at about 8.30, 6.30. And ramp, 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 ramp up, warm up. And I get all loose for the show. And that, that's worked out really well since, since, uh, since doing the show. Because it gets me warmed up and I'm not so tense out of the gate for the show. 
We do the show, which is the two-hour talkback format, which I like to call because it's got it's got segments and stuff as well, which gives us a nice variety of things to talk about as well. And then we do this post-show, which is kind of wind up and kind of what did we miss kind of thing as well. And it's a nice set of programming as well. Uh, we do it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash geekio show, which is affiliated, by the way, if you've got a take two. If you've got an Amazon Prime account, you can drop us your free subscription if it's not in use, which we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, every little bit helps, so you can give us one-time bit donations as well. Again, every little bit helps. We greatly appreciate it as well. Uh, if you're subscribed, you have to re-hit the subscribe button month over month. So I've been informed as well. So if your month subscription is coming up, please do hit that re uh, that subscribe button. Uh, we, we appreciate it very much. We've also got that. Uh, the show also goes up on YouTube at youtube.com slash generic live show. Uh, and uh, it can be found on youtube.com slash geekio show as well under generic live show on that youtube page uh, as well and it'll continue you know it'll continue to be that way and 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 we're now publishing the pre-show and the post show so you get the full the live viewer at the same time and that's pretty much the show uh, it's still me uh doing all of the producing uh, i i throw i bounce things off people as well i mentioned her previously in the show but maddie is kind of my bounce off consultant person for the genetic live show uh, she's the next of kin for the genetic live show if i put down a next of kin and it would have it would be cj boat and maddie benedetti uh, as next of kins for this show and i don't know i i and we're we're, we're segueing to the future of the show but definitely We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, all right. So, uh, one thing as well. One another thing as well. Uh, you can support the show. Uh, tinyurlcom slash generic store uh, is another way you can support the show. That is our generic live home. You can fill up your home with all of the generic live show goods. Uh, we've got uh, mugs. We've got shirts. We've got stickers uh, and an indoor pillow, a throw pillow. Uh, as well it's super good so uh, head on over there tinyurl.com slash generic store is one thing uh, as well uh facebook.com slash generic live show uh, facebook.com slash geekio show is also where we are on social media as well uh most of the time i'm pretty active on facebook as well so that that's also that email generic live show at gmail.com Summarize it or summarize. I'll tell you that again at the end of the show as well, but that's basically where this show is at Where are we heading uh, is the next important question. Well As you can as you can hear from As you can hear from that first episode of the generic live show I really don't want to make any out outreach promises uh, Except I will be doing the great burger debate in December. That's a thing <laughs> that is a thing that we're doing, so we'll definitely be doing that. Uh, that's definitely a definite. That extra life this year is also a definite. Uh, but but outside of that, I I really want to record more footage. Uh, I definitely want to phase out ads on this show. Uh, that is also that's one thing I really want to be doing uh, doing less of uh, is ads on this show. This show is supported by you guys so why oh one thing i forgot to mention patreon.com slash geekio show geekio uh patreon.com slash geekio is another way you can support this show directly uh there's there's also that uh but i want to get more guests on the show uh because and mainly may not in the way that you would think if people want to do the full rock block that's that's hella cool but i don't expect people to be doing three hours of programming particularly on at this time slot so mainly guests for segments or bits uh, also is an idea that i had uh, also hot throws 
also little clips and and that sort of thing as well uh could be possible as well to kind of break up the show content for the video uh, and maybe the podcast as well uh, but i don't want them to become separate things so i would release those as set those if i was to record something for the show i would want to release it as its separate thing so it could be uh, seen outside of the live stream if that makes sense so it's not necessarily a heavy content based thing uh i'm gonna be doing i want to do more of these type of shows where i peel back the curtain and explain what's happening because i want to involve you guys in the process as well because like i learned in the, just re-watching that episode uh, i think the show definitely used to be me talking to a camera now it's me talking to a group of people so i definitely want that to become more of a thing i want to i want to be talking to a a group of people uh, and at their input on things so i definitely want to do more of line it behind the scenes kind of work as well uh, and publish those uh, because as as we move forward and kind of grow this thing i definitely want to involve the audience a lot more if that makes sense so that's definitely a thing that i want to be doing more of another thing i want to be doing more of is uh, i i wrote in here more frequent uh, so I'm playing around at the moment with a, I don't want to give too much away, uh, but I'm playing around with a different formatted sh of a show that will be posted in a different place and it would use the Genetic Live Show branding. So that's, that's all I'll say for that is it'll use, it would use the Genetic Live Show branding but it wouldn't directly impact the main show, if that makes sense. It, it'll be it'll be a different show using the Genetic Live Show branding. Uh, whether, I know what I meant by different formats, whether that'll be a serialized, oh, hang on, I have to play this now that I've said that word, because every time, I can't not think of serial and not think of this. I just can't not do that. <laughs> oh, I remember when that was good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I remember when cereal was good. But I, I, whether that's a serialized... Really, I can't not move off... Whether that's a different formatted thing using the branding or if that's going to be the show's new direction because I kind of again I like the talkback format whether I port that to something else or create another new thing for this platform will be an entirely new thing that I will have to come up with but I'm experiencing with a mobile platform for the generic live show that's all I'll say there I am I'm writing material for that for that platform currently and i can't say too much about it that's uh, so there is there is that as well and i also want to do more special events because special events are fun to do they, they kind of break up they kind of break up uh, these these shows and they won't necessarily replace the show uh, but i definitely i definitely think that special events kind of again break things up and taking big stories of the week as much as i can and kind of bring them into special events again none of this is binding this is all hypothetical out there space noise i so want that to be the i so want that to be the uh, thumbnail i know it won't but <laughs> I definitely want that to be the thumbnail with the video. Was a weird, funny face, but normally it's just me getting caught off guard. That, that's definitely, that's definitely a thing. Uh, all right, so and again, like I said, more guests, more frequency, more not necessarily peel back the curtain episodes like this has been, 
but this is definitely good uh, for episode 100. Is kind of peel back the curtain, remember the, the, the past, the present, the future. We had a game. We had two games, actually. <laughs> uh, we've got, we've got a, we got a, we got a post show to, uh, to you know, uh, still get through as well. But uh, this is definitely, the genetic live show is definitely happening. And I, it, it's, and yes, ever since Dragon Con, which I talked about last week, I don't know, I've just gotten a real, a real kick. And I think the Genetic Live Show uh, can, can, can perform and, and, um, and I think it has potential. It's just, you know, if you've got an idea, please do submit it. Uh, Genetic Live Show at gmail.com. Uh, we might as well wrap up. But, ladies and gentlemen, cheers to 100 years of the genetic life show. I can't not cheers and not drink alcohol. Yeah, I can't not cheers and then not drink. But, 100 years of the genetic life show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, you can find you can find the Junk Live Show on uh, we're proud members of the Geek.io podcast network, geek-io.net. You can use slash uh, GLS uh, to get to the archives of this show, youtube.com slash Junk Live Show, facebook.com slash Junk Live Show, patreon.com slash Geek.io, uh, tinyurl.com slash generic store, the last two, patreon.com slash Geek.io, and tinyurl.com slash generic store the last two uh, you can use that to help us out uh, twitch.tv slash geekio show is uh, where you can watch the show live every Sunday at uh, doors open at, at 6 30 uh, yeah doors open 6 30 uh, eastern time that's 8 30 Australian eastern center time with the show starting at 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time Zone, 7 a.m. East in the Eastern Time Zone. Uh, email, once again, show at gmail.com. And that's about it. Uh, I mentioned Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Uh, next week will be a regular show. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know that format that I talked about that, that you like a lot? Uh, there. We'll be back next week, funnily enough. Uh, opening music, I've not mentioned this in a while. Opening and closing music is Cantina Rag by Jack Jackson F. Smith. Uh, the show is produced, executive producer is Dale, no, are we doing this? Are we really, okay. The show is produced by Dale Campbell, hosted by Dale Campbell. Consultants on the Generic Live Show, written and edited by this American, this American Generic Live Show. This Australian Generic Live Show. <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, this was fun. All right. Thank you everyone, and we'll see you next week for a regular episode. Finally, we're back to regular episodes, and then taking extra life off. <laughs> uh, 2017, you ended so weirdly. Uh, thanks everyone again. Uh, seriously though, from the bottom of my heart, thank you everyone for this amazing journey over the last nearly four years yeah four years uh it has been amazing again whether you've been here from the beginning uh, or just joining us now thank you and cheers cheers to 200 more years of the drink live show thanks everyone for joining us we'll see you all next time bye for now
know what? We'll end the whole song play. <laughs> Geekio Media Network Production. Copyright 2017.